going to try to scan some artwork and see if we can create a design. These are little things that are gifts from my granddaughter and her mom who helps her with her painting. I have a little chicken and then I have handprint. What we're scanning right now is a little flower pot that she's created and traced her handprint. And the flower pot and the leaves were actually foam. I'm going to try to scan this without magnets. So let's see what happens. So what we'll do on the machine side, we need to be in my design center and we want to select the icon for scanning. This is an illustration design. With the illustration designs, it means they're going to be a combination of fill stitches and outline stitches if you want them. And we'll go ahead and choose illustration. I am scanning it from my scanning mat and it will move. Now hopefully this piece won't move as it's scanning it. So let's see what happens. All right, let's see what it recognized. Actually, it's very good and I'm very satisfied with that. What I want to do is to, to use the selection handles here and I want to crop this. Now let's talk a little bit about this screen. One of the things that you see are maximum number of colors. This is going to convert this into stitches and what it's reading are some different colors. For instance, I can tell right here it's reading some of the shadows that are created from the light as a different yeah. color. What I'll tell you you need to do is you need to, to look at the results and depending on the number of colors that you have selected and see if it's better. I turn it on by deselecting that it will create white stitches. So I want to remove that background. Let's go ahead and choose OK. Now what it's doing is converting this into artwork and we can see how much cleanup we would have. I could always opt just to have the little hand and the leaves and omit the flower pot or use a shape that's in my design center for the flower pot. and choose set. Now you can see that what has happened is some of the yellow has turned, uh, or actually some of the purple has turned to yellow. And there are a couple of different colors here. I might not mind that because this is an artistic look and I might just stitch it out like that. But let me show you how I can adjust it. So let's zoom in to 400% and you can see that I have some irregular edges. I have some yellow in here, which really should be this background color. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and use my eyedropper and I'll touch this background. I now have that color selected and I'll take my paintbrush and let's just see the size of that paintbrush. And you can see the size of it. And right now it is a round paintbrush. What you may want to do is to change that so that it's a different shape. So go into your settings and change the shape so it's a square one. Let's go ahead and choose OK. Make sure we have the paintbrush selected and now you can get a straighter edge to follow through. And you just follow through and you carefully go through and, and clean this up. Now, I won't do all of this. You'll get an idea. Like I went too far just then. I'll undo. Let's go back and try it one more time. So that's one of the things that, that I would do. The next thing I see some yellow on the outside of this flower. I might want to reduce that by erasing those stitches. So I would go up to say 1600%, take my hand and move over to the areas that I want to remove those yellow stitches. There we go. So I would take my eraser and I choose the shape I want and I would erase those stitches. Now that's too large, choose undo, go back to the eraser choose a smaller size and remember right now we're working with it on a very high zoom 
So I would come in here and I would clean up these stitches. See that if we go to next and we look at this in an information view, we have one, two, three, four, five, six colors. And we could eliminate one or two of those colors and eliminate some of the stitches on the outside, but this design would be 33,000 stitches. Let's look at it on a dark background so you can see where you would need to clean up something like this. All right, let's go ahead and look at some of the other options here. Again, this is a fill stitch and you could change some portions of this if you wanted to different stitch. Yeah. Let's see if we can select it. Okay, if I wanted to change that to a different stitch type, and let's say I wanted to go in and change it to one of these fill stitches, I wanted to change it to this pattern, I could do that and choose okay. And now that pattern is, is in this design is when you go in and you change those types of things, you're reducing the overall stitched count. So if I went in and I selected the portion of the flower pot that has that fill stitch, I can also change that to a different stitch. Let's choose something else for it. And let's select that. We'll select okay. And you can see what happened is it's filled it in in some of these areas that I may not have wanted. So if I had cleared out these yellow stitches and, and filled them in as a purple, it would have filled that in in the background. And if you go back and you look at the information, you can now see that this is 26,788 stitches. Okay, here's our little chicken. And what we want to do is again, crop this using our cropping tools. And I'll move it as close to the original design as I can get it. And now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and leave it at 10 colors. I want the outline off and remove the background. I'll choose okay. And the most important thing about the chicken is to keep the overall shape. You see what it's done, it kept the overall shape, but what it did is it, it has some colors in here that I may not want. What I'm going to do is reduce the number of colors down to five and I'll choose retry. And that just makes a blob. So you've lost all your definition, that doesn't work. Let's move it up to 15 colors and retry. So with 15 colors, I actually have some fairly good detail and I have some colors around the feet. I can see everything and I can clean this up. So I'll go ahead and choose set. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I really don't need to see the background of this anymore. I can remove the background and I can go in and I can make some adjustments. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is make it larger so you can see it. The first thing I want to do is I want all of the eye area to be black. I'll take the eyedropper, select that black color. Now I want to take the paintbrush. Let's check the size of it. It's fairly large right now. Let's make it smaller and I do want it to be round and I'll choose okay. And let's just start filling in some of this eye and we'll just take the hand and you can see that I, I do have some brown here but what I'll do is I'll clean that up with the background color and I'll show you that. So I'll take the eyedropper, select this background. I'll now take that paintbrush 
and I'll remove a little bit of things that I don't want that are around in the background. And I really don't want any of this dark color like this. I want this basically to be two colors and those are going to be two colors of yellow and we'll, we'll select those in a moment. Now I'm looking at my artwork and looking at the shape of the, the nose of this chicken and the nose is basically more or less in this shape that I'm, I'm selecting right now. So we'll leave it like that. And now what I want to do is to erase all of the, these background colors or another option is if I want those strokes, I can take the eyedropper, select the color I want, which I want this light color. And let me make sure I selected it. So let's select right here. And that's a light lemony color. And I'll take the paintbrush or the bucket. I can try each to, to see and fill it in. So the bucket actually worked better. Another thing you'll notice is that these are actually white stitches. I do not want those stitches. So what I'm going to do is, because I read the background, I'm going to erase them. Now I want this chicken to have this dark brown leg and then I want these pink areas to be a deeper brown. So in order to do that, the first thing I want to do is to take the eyedropper and select this brown and I'm going to go ahead and take the bucket first, but before I do that, I want to make sure and see what happens. And I just noticed I cannot use the bucket first. I need to, to close the top of this leg. We have a round brush and choose a smaller size because we're really zoomed in. And what I want to do is to Take that paintbrush and just fill in the top of this leg, just so that I close it off. That's good. Let's go ahead and save it to memory right now because I, I've done a lot of work and I don't want to lose it. Now I'll choose next. And I want you to see what this would look like if it's stitched out. On a dark background, you can see this is what it would look like. On a light background, here it is. Now, obviously, you could go in and add a little more detail and other colors to this, but you get a general idea about what the process is. Notice this is 19,000 stitches. If I wanted to make it less dense, I could try reducing the overall density. We can see what that does to the, the design and it reduced it down to 19,000 stitches. So I didn't really lose that much detail and that might be what I choose when I actually stitch it out and do a little more cleanup on it. So let's uh, say this to memory because I don't, don't want to lose what I have. And let me return and go to the pocket and let me show you the hand prints. So, here are the hand prints and I need to, I have that scan on the background. Let me all clear first. So let's go back and get the design from our pocket and we'll start out with the largest size. And you'll notice that what I did is I eliminated a portion of those hand prints and you can see where I still have some cleanup and I have about three or four three hand prints here. This is, we'll give it a moment. This is 30,961 stitches with two hand prints. Now the two hand prints is approximately, I think it's 19,000 stitches, but we'll see. 19,901. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and I hope you have quite a few takeaways from it. I want you to know that I'm thinking of each and every one of you right now during this difficult time. You're in my prayers and please keep me in yours. Thank you everyone and have a great day.